Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. Check this out. Have you ever wondered how to really easily add cool looking particle effects to your videos? Be that fireworks and smoke or energy balls or fairy glitter? There's actually a really powerful and completely free particle generator available that comes with thousands of great looking presets that you can customize in any way that you can imagine. I'm talking about the standalone version of Particle Illusion from Bars FX. The awesome thing with this tool is that once you're happy with your final particle effects, you can render them out into video files on a transparent background to easily composite them on top of your videos or share them with friends and family and yes, even sell them online. And if you enjoy the free standalone application, Boris FX also offers a paid plugin version of Particle Illusion that works directly within Premiere Pro, After Effects, Sony Vegas, Media Composer and many other video editing packages. The plugin also offers some cool advanced features such as being able to composite the particles directly onto your videos, using the integrated Mocha Tracker for super easy tracking and masking, having your particles react to sound and music, integration with the 3D camera and After Effects and much much more. So if you're a big fan of using plugins and effects, be sure to check that out. But in this tutorial I want to show you how to use the free standalone version of Particle Illusion and take you through some of the exciting new features that have been added in the latest 2021 version. There's new 3D particles, cameras and views, lines to connect your particles and create some really interesting motion graphic backgrounds, turbulence, deflector improvements and much much more. But before we jump into the tutorial, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Boris FX, in case you don't know, creates some of the biggest industry leading tools for filmmaking and visual effects. From the Academy Award winning Planar Tracker Mocha to the Sapphire and Continuum Effects Collections, Silhouettes and Optics, these tools are used by professionals and many other creative people all over the world. They work with most of the popular video editing tools out there and there's lots of different licensing options to suit your budget. Go and check out all of the awesome stuff on BorisFX.com and if you do decide to get in on the fun, you can use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word to knock 15% off the final price. But now I feel like I've waffled on forever, let's finally jump into the tutorial. First off, all you will need to follow along with this tutorial is the free standalone version of Particle Illusion from Boris FX. To get your copy, simply hop over to borisfx.com and navigate to the Particle Illusion page. Then simply download the installer for Particle Illusion Standalone. For that you may have to sign up for a free Boris FX account if you don't already have one. And be sure to also download the free emitter library for Particle Illusion as well. Once you've got everything downloaded, install both Particle Illusion and the emitter library on your machine and you're ready to go. Now this is the default interface that you should see when you first launch Particle Illusion. Over the left hand side you will find the Particle Browser and in here you'll literally find thousands of great looking particle presets and you can simply select them and they'll show up in the little preview window at the top. You can also click and drag in this preview window to preview what this would look like with an animated particle emitter. Over on the right hand side you have a big preview window for your stage and underneath that a timeline, playback controls and an area where you can modify your keyframes. In the middle you find the properties panel and in here you'll be able to see and modify all of the properties for your layers, your emitters as well as your particle types. Now first off if you have installed the free emitter library that comes with Particle Illusion 2021, let's come into the particle browser. Over on the left hand side let's go into the library view and in here you should find a folder called emitters underscore 2021. And this is a set of emitters that comes specifically with the 2021 version of Particle Illusion and these emitters use the features that are available in the 2021 version specifically. Here you have a really nice example of the new lines feature being used. Let's come to maybe the fiber optics sheet. You can also just zoom in and out by scrolling on your mouse wheel up and down in this preview window. You can see the lines as well as the new turbulence fields in Particle Illusion. You can create some really trippy effects with that. Now in the emitters 2021, let's come to the very bottom and the 2021 library also includes some basic emitters. So a really plain basic emitter, a basic super emitter which is emitting other emitters. So you can create some really nice recursive particle effects, a basic burst, 
basic rising and falling particles. Now, most of the time, I recommend if you want to create some new particle effects, just go into the grid view for the preset browser, find a preset that kind of looks and behaves the way you're imagining your final effect to look like, and then just tweak it from there. However, it's really nice that you can now simply search for basic and you've got a set of essentially starting from scratch style emitters, very basic, unstyled. And for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to start with one of these. Now let's select the basic super emitter, which is an emitter of other emitters. And with this emitter selected, make sure you're at the very beginning of your timeline and then click into the middle of the stage to add this emitter onto the stage. If you now play this animation back, you can see that we now have an emitter emitting other particles on our stage. Also, because the effect right now isn't too complicated, you can pretty freely scrub through and this plays back really nice and fast because it's all GPU accelerated. Now let's start out by tweaking the look of some of these particles. In the middle of the interface, you will find your properties panel. And by the way, if you don't like this layout, you can also come up into view and there are specific views for editing, creating and browsing through these particle effects. But I actually really like the default layout. Now in the properties panel, you will find the properties for all of the emitters as well as the particles that you have added to your stage. Right now, we only have this basic super emitter added and you can expand the properties here and there's a ton in here that we'll get to in just a little bit. Let's come down within this basic super emitter, you'll find the basic emitter and that's the emitters that this emitter emits, which gives you this nice recursive particle effect. Let's expand this basic emitter and it itself has a ton of properties that you can modify, customize and animate. But let's scrub all the way to the bottom to this new particle type. So this is the actual particle that we're seeing on the screen. Let's expand that, scroll down just a little bit. With the mouse over the stage, I'm going to scroll up to zoom in a little bit and I'm finding these particles a little too blobby, a bit too blurry and there's too few of them. It doesn't quite look interesting enough. So in this new particle type, let's increase the number. So you can just click and drag right. Let's just check this up to, yeah, maybe around about 150 or so. But they're just a bit too big. So I'm going to lower the size to maybe around about five. So you're getting a much more intricate, a much more detailed effect. Maybe I'll check the number up to maybe around about 200 or so, and maybe the size to four or something. I want something pretty detailed. Then in the new particle type, let's expand the properties. And again, I'm not gonna cover all of these, just have a play. Like particle illusion is a great tool to just have fun and play around with, tweak these parameters and just see what happens. Now I'm going to enable intense, which is essentially going to additively multiply these particles on top of each other. So you get these really nice, intense, bright highlights where there's many particles kind of clumping together. I'm also going to expand the colors tab. Right now that is solid white, but it's actually a gradient. So you can click on this, bring up the color gradient editor. And in here, you can click below this color bar to add new color points in any way that you want to create a custom color gradient for your particles. Now I want my particles to start out nice and bright yellowish, then slowly change into some red brownish towards the middle of their life. And finally, just have them fade into a dark purple color at the end. But again, just customize this in any way that you want. Let's hit apply. With the mouse over the stage, scroll down to zoom out just a little bit. Let's rewind and just play this back. And that is looking pretty cool already. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up into the base emitter that emits all of these other particle emitters. I'm going to bring up the velocity a little bit from 100 to maybe 150, 160. I'm going to increase the number as well to maybe 150 just to add a few more particle emitters just so there's a little bit more going on on the stage. Let's rewind again and play this back. And yep, I think that's looking just a little bit more interesting. Next, let's make use of one of the cool new features that is available in the 2021 version of Particle Illusion, and that is Turbulence. So let's come back into the Properties panel and under the Basic Super Emitter, there's a Position Turbulence property. Let's increase that to maybe around about 50 or so. And you can see that all of the emitters are kind of now drifting off. And if you rewind and play this back, well, there is some swirling and turbulence happening in here, but because the frequency is so low, the waves are so big that you can't really see it in detail. So in the basic super emitter, let's expand the properties. Let's expand the turbulence field. And in here, let's jack up this frequency. Right now it's 10. So let's just jack this up. You can see how you can now see these really nice bends coming in. So let's jack this up to 60 or 70. Let's rewind and play this back. And yeah, that's looking really nice and interesting. 
Now I'm going to lower the velocity a little bit again. I find that they're shooting off just a little bit too far, maybe around 120 or so. And let's also zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. Now the cool thing is that turbulence exists at every single level in this hierarchy. So the basic super emitter has a turbulence. The basic emitter has a position turbulence and this is a multiplier on top of the base position turbulence. But we can also come all the way down into our particle and the particle itself will also have some position turbulence that you can modify but it also has its own turbulence field. So in the new particle type which is the actual particle underneath that emitter of the emitter expand the turbulence field and we can now increase the frequency scale here as well. So right now it's one cell. Maybe let's bring this up and well, maybe not too much. Maybe around about three. I want to be fairly gentle with this. Let's rewind and play this back. And so now we can see that the particles within each of these emitters itself has a little bit of turbulence going on. Now you may have noticed that so far we're only applying turbulence to the position, but you can also apply turbulence to the size. So Let's come back all the way to our basic super emitter. And in here, besides the position turbulence, there's also a size turbulence. Let's jack this up to maybe around about a hundred. You can see that these particles, depending on where they sit in the turbulence field, get a little bit bigger. So let's rewind and play this back. And it's kind of adding another dimension to the look of these particles. And remember, we just started with basic emitter. So with just a few tweaks, we've got some really interesting particle effects. Now, the next new feature that is available in 2021 is lines and there's some cool stuff you can do with them. So let's come all the way down into our particle itself, so into this new particle type, which is the particles we're actually seeing on the screen. Under the properties, you will find a section for lines. Let's expand this. And here you have different options to say, connect to the main emitter, connect to the emitter, connect to the birth position or connect to other particles. Let's enable the option to connect to main emitter. And that is going to draw lines from all of the particles to the base of this super emitter. If you rewind and play this back, you're now getting a really trippy effect where all of these particles have lines connecting back to the origin of the emitter that is emitting them. Let's disable this again and let's enable connect to emitter. Now this is a very different effect because now every particle is connected to the emitter that created it rather than the super emitter that emitted all of the other ones. So let's rewind again and play this back. And it's a really trippy, it's a really interesting looking effect. Let's disable that again and let's try out connect to birth position which will draw a line from the particle to the place where it was created rather than the emitter that created it. Let's rewind and play this back. And again, a really interesting but quite different effect. Finally, let's disable that and enable connect to particles. And this is probably my favorite because it actually draws lines between neighboring particles within the same stream. So you're getting these really techy looking streaks of particles happening. You can control the max length of the lines that is being drawn. You can also control the thickness. So maybe I'll drop this down to one so the lines are a little bit finer. Let's rewind again and play this back. And it's looking really cool. I really like this lines feature. Now let's come to the top left hand side of the stage. Click on this little drop down and select fit to 100%. So we're zooming right back out and we can see the whole thing. Now the other really huge feature that Particle Illusion 2021 introduced is 3D particles, cameras and views. Right now my view is set to 2D at the top. This might already be 3D for you. Let's click on this and change this over to 3D. Now all particles will be emitted within an actual 3D space and if you now come to the very top in your properties panel you have this camera model here. Right now that is set to none. So let's pop this open and select maybe the orbit camera and now if we tweak this spin property and change this over. Hmm, well all of our particles are flat and that is because if the view is set to 2D when you're creating these particle effects on your stage they will all emit in 2D. If this is set to 3D already all of these particles will already be emitted in 3D. However we can now go into our basic super emitter and there's an option here to emit in 3D and now if you spin you're actually spinning around a three-dimensional field of your particles and this opens up some really exciting possibilities. For example, let's go back to the very beginning of our scene. Let's set the spin to zero. Over on the right hand side, all of these properties have this little drop down here and this allows you to set keyframes and create animation on 
every single property that you can modify within Particle Illusion. And it's super easy to use. With the property selected, simply click on these little four dots here and you can now create a keyframe. Right now it's set to constant. You can create a linear keyframe or a Bezier keyframe. I'm going to select Bezier. The property values become outlined in red to indicate that there are keyframes on this property. Underneath your playback controls, you'll also see the timeline with these keyframes represented as small little squares. Then let's scrub through and I'm actually going to scrub all the way through to the end of my project. And let's increase the spin to maybe around about 120, 150 or so. So the camera is going to spin around this particle field as it develops throughout our animation that created a new keyframe. You can see the little squares right down here. And now if you rewind and play this back, you can see the camera spinning around the particle field in 3D space. Now it is getting a little bit slow because there's lots of particles in the scene. There's also lots happening with the lines and everything else. So let's just really quickly render this out. So come into the main menu under File, select Render Project. That's going to bring up the render and export settings and you've got tons of options for presets, formats, resolution in here. I'm not going to go through too much in detail. Just a quick note, I recommend just use the preset ProRes 422 if you want to render out your particles on a black background so you can screen or additively blend it on top of your video. It'll look really nice for explosions, particle effects, fire, sparkles, anything that's bright. If you do need transparency on the background, go with ProRes 444 plus pre-multiplied or straight alpha. It'll give you a transparent background. Just note that the files become a whole lot bigger. So I'm just going to go with ProRes 422. Format also, if you switch over to MP4, the file size will usually be a lot smaller. Otherwise, if you want higher quality, just go with the QuickTime MOV. So I'm just going to leave this on MP4. Also, let's just click on this browse and find a path and output location. Let's just call this tutorial and render that out on my desktop and then simply hit Start Render. That might take a little bit depending on the complexity of the particle effect and the power of your computer. But once that's done, you've rendered out your particle effect into a video file that you can use in any video editing tool that you may have available. And that is all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave all of that down in the comment section below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.